Thank you for joining us for another lesson from God's Word. The Streetsboro Church of Christ is located at 1386 Russell Drive, Streetsboro, Ohio, 44241. If you're ever in the area, we hope that you'll stop in and worship with us. We hope that you'll enjoy this lesson brought to you by our minister, Ralph Price. glad for the presence of everyone who is here today. We're thankful that you've come our way. We are con um, concluding, I meant to say, a series of lessons that we started uh, back in um, early February when I first got back from Costa Rica. At that time, the elders asked me to do a series of lessons on leadership in the Lord's Church. We talked about the qualifications for elders in the church and the work of elders in the Lord's Church. We've talked about deacons and their qualifications and also uh, some of the works the deacons are involved in and areas where we need uh, deacons to be involved in the work of the church. And then the elders asked me for a conclusion to the whole series to preach a lesson on our responsibility to the eldership or to the leadership of the church. I don't think they requested me to do that because they felt that we were not respecting them like we should or anything of that nature. But I think as we've said, this year we're going to place an emphasis on growth and they're going to be asking uh, some of the men to step up into leadership roles in the church. And um, we need to remember that ultimately Christ is the head of the church. The eldership, the elders are the overseers, the stewards of the work of the church that belongs to Christ. And so when we um, fulfill our obligations to the leadership of the church, we're not only are fulfilling it to our leaders, but to our ultimate leader, who is Christ. And so it's important for us to understand our responsibility uh, to the elders, to the deacons, the leadership of the church, their work is very, very important. And I would suggest to you that their work is more important than any other work that any person could be involved in on this planet. And that is because their work involves eternity. As they watch out for our souls, as we've talked about, and they strive to help us to inherit that eternal home with God, no other job, other than maybe the job of a preacher, compares to that in the fact that we can affect what happens to a person for eternity. Basically what I'm going to do, um, I told Sean, and he was very happy to hear this, it's going to be a shorter lesson today. And, and he said before I came up, he said, I'm ready to be done. <laughs> I said, <laughs> well, I have a shorter lesson today. So uh, we're going to look at three verses Three passages, actually, in the New Testament that talk about our responsibility to the leadership in the church. And we're going to think about those. The first two come from Hebrews chapter 13. So if you would turn to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 7. Here we read, Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Again, the word elder or bishop or overseer, none of those words are used in that passage, but we are talking about those who rule over us in the Lord's church. And so I believe we're talking about the leadership in the church. And we're told basically to do two things in that passage. We're told to remember and we're told to follow. If you look up the word remember, you'll see that it means to be mindful, to remember, to call to mind, to think of and feel for a person or thing, to hold in memory, to keep in mind, or to make mention of. One of the primary responsibilities that we have to our elders is to constantly remember them. How do, how do we do that and what does that mean? Well, it talks about in the definition, I said to make mention of, to remember, to recognize. One of the ways that we remember our elders, hopefully, is we remember them in prayer. And we pray for them constantly. And again, I'm saying elders, but I mean elders and deacons, the leadership of the church. We need to be praying for them constantly. We are to feel for them, which was part of the definition of the word remember. Or 
we could use the word empathize uh, with them, realizing the gravity of their job and the enormity of the task that they have undertaken, we should empathize for them and as a result, remember them. They have a difficult job. And again, they have a job that has um, more lasting consequences than any other job uh, in this world. So we need to remember them and, and empathize and remember them in our prayers. Number two, we need to follow them. We're to follow their faith. In other words, we're to follow their example. We remember, we've read in this series of lessons, 1 Peter 5. And in 1 Peter 5, 1 through 3, Peter is talking about himself being an elder and a leader in the church. And as, he, as he's talking there, he says, The elders who are among you I exhort, I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion but willingly, not for, for dishonest gain, but eagerly. Nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Being examples to the flock. Now, as we have studied about the qualifications for elders, we've studied about the qualifications for deacons as well, which are also... There are many qualifications for deacons. By virtue of those qualifications, if somebody is an elder or a deacon in the Lord's church, we can be safe in saying that it's good to follow their example, to follow their faith. Uh, I have heard it said before that when one looks at an elder in the Lord's church, they ought to be able to look at that elder and tell their little boy, that's how I want you to grow up to be. I want you to be like him. Now, we're not suggesting that our elders are perfect, that they're sinless in any way, but that they are faithful, mature Christians who are doing the work of the Lord. And we remember 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 1, where Paul told the Corinthians, imitate me as I also imitate Christ. And Certainly that applies to the, the elders and the deacons in the church as, as they allow the light of Christ to shine through them and they set the example for us, we should follow that example and imitate them as they imitate Christ. We don't imitate their bad qualities, not that they have a lot of bad qualities, but where they are following Christ and doing good, uh, we follow the, that and imitate that in our lives. Number two, Hebrews 13 and verse 7, 17, excuse me, Hebrews 13, 17. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. So here are two more qualifications, and they both kind of mean pretty much the same thing. Obey and submit are two verbs that are used in that passage. The word obey, it means to listen to, to obey, to yield to, comply with, to trust, to have confidence in, or to be confident. Elders, again, are rulers over the Lord's church. They're stewards over the, the Lord's church. And it's our responsibility to yield to, to comply with the decisions that they make, as long as those decisions are in accordance with God's word. Now, again, we understand that ultimately Christ is the head of the church and we serve God and he is our number one in terms of whom we obey. If there ever were to come a time when an eldership would require something of the Lord's people that Christ did not require, that goes against the will of Christ, all Obviously, we as members of the Lord's church and servants of Christ would follow God and not men. But wherein they are making decisions on, on matters of expediency, things that, you know, not what we're going to do, but how, how we're going to go about it. Yes, we're to, we're to spread the gospel. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to have a preacher. We're going to support missionaries. We're going to have door knocking campaigns, we're going to do correspondence courses, we're going to have a fair booth, we're going to do all of these different things, matters of expediency on how we go about fulfilling the commands of Christ, we're to obey. To rebel against a godly eldership is actually to rebel against Christ. 
because Christ has told us through the scriptures that he desires that there be overseers over the church, that there be elders, and that we submit and obey them. We need to have trust and confidence in those elders and those deacons. The fact that, you know, we have appointed them, we've, we've freely and willingly appointed them to serve over us shows that at least at some point we had confidence and trust in them, and they've certainly given us no cause to not have that trust and confidence in them going forward. Also, the idea of being submissive. We're told to obey those who rule over you and be submissive. The word submit, metaphorically, it means to yield to authority and admonition. The elder, again, his authority is in matters of expediency. And by reason of their experience, they're elders. They, they, they are not new Christians. They're not novice. But by reasons of their experience, we should respect their decisions. That does not mean that we might always agree with every decision that they make. But we respect their decision and, and uh, acknowledge that they've come to that decision through much thought and much prayer. And um, whether or not we think it is the right path, we need to respect that. The reason that we are to submit, the reason we are to obey according to Hebrews 13 and verse 17 is because they watch out for our souls. Uh, they have our ultimate good at heart. And the, these leaders that have been put over us, um, in their wisdom, uh, they make certain decisions on how we're going to do things. And they are doing that in order to watch out for our souls. Passage number three is the passage that Dayton read for us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 12, and 13. In this passage, and I'm going to read it again, we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Here we're told to recognize and esteem. Recognize and esteem. The word recognize, it means to have regard for. It means to cherish. It means to pay attention. The elders certainly deserve our respect. The deacons deserve our respect. They deserve our love for the good work that they have committed themselves to do. So we're to recognize them and also esteem them very highly in love. The word esteem, it means to consider, to deem, or account worthy, to think worthy. We're to hold them in, in high regard for the work that they do. In 1 Timothy 5, 17 through 18, Paul here says, Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture says, You shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. So as we think about what we've discussed so far, just these three passages, it, it, we're told that we're to remember and we're to follow, okay? We're to remember them and follow them. We are to obey and submit. We are to recognize and esteem our elders. The elders deserve our respect. The elders deserve our love and appreciation. And they certainly deserve and need remembrance in our prayers, our responsibilities to the elders. Also, we are to follow their example in regard to their godly lifestyles. Remember, there are a lot of qualifications in the qualification for elders, and most of those qualifications are just qualities that all Christians should have. Again, there were some that were different. It has to be a husband, so that means it's a man and a married man and a married man with children. Those things aren't required for being a Christian, but they are required for being an elder. But there are other qualities there that we discuss that all Christians should strive to possess. And so we're to follow their godly examples uh, in terms of their lifestyle, the qualities they possess, but also in terms of the work that they do. By definition, an, an elder is an active working member of the Lord's church. And if we're going to follow their example, we should be the same. An active working member of the Lord's church. The eldership plans a lot of good works. Okay, they, they plan a lot of good things, and we should be of the mindset, let them never have to worry about, is anybody going to come? Is anybody going to take part? If we do this, 
or if we try to do that, are we going to have enough participation from the congregation to make it worthwhile? Let them never worry about that. Now, did, did you pay attention to the songs that John chose? Okay, I, I always do. He always, he knows pretty much what my sermon's going to be from the outline he gets ahead of time. But notice his songs, I Want to Be a Worker. Can he depend on you? I wrote them down. There is much to do. And then you don't know this yet, but the closing song is to the work. Okay, so the elders are planning a lot of good things. There's a lot of good works coming that we need to be excited about, that we need to take part in. And they're going to, again, be talking to men about stepping into leadership roles. And um, we need to follow their example. They've stepped into leadership roles and they do a good work. And we need to be active in the Lord's church as well. And then finally, again, just applying this, the idea of being submissive uh, to the elders. You know, in their roles as shepherds of the flock, they've set aside times three times a week for us to gather together for a time of nourishment and strengthening of the flock. This worship service is one. And, and again, we know that we're commanded to meet and worship on, on the Lord's day. They've made the decision, and as most congregations do, to meet twice on the Lord's day, to also have a time of Bible class, a Bible study set, set aside as well. And also on midweek we meet, and that's how they've chosen to do it. Many of us may know of congregations that only meet once on Sunday. I used to be a part of a congregation that met on Tuesday nights instead of Wednesday. That's what the leadership decided, but... Um, you know, those are matters of expediency, but our elders in their desire to feed and nourish the flock and strengthen one another have set aside three times. Uh, uh, they, they, they weren't the ones who decided that's been in place for a while, but they continue that policy of get meeting three times to uh, nourish and strengthen one another. Now, when we on a regular basis choose to stay home or do other things rather than to attend worship, then we are not only violating Hebrews 10 and verse 25 that tells us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, but we're also rebelling against the authority of the eldership. They are trying to look out for our souls. They're trying to help us to grow and mature and become strong Christians. And again, I understand that there are some people who physically are unable to come three times a week and that there are other considerations uh, uh, afraid to drive in the dark and things of that nature. And I understand that. But I know also that there are times that we choose to stay home when we could come and take part in the Lord's service and be nourished and strengthened and encouraged and encourage others as well. They're watching out for our souls. They want to make sure that you're fed. We frustrate that work when we choose to be absent, when we choose not to be here when we could. In a very real sense, we're like a sheep who won't eat his food. We're like an animal who, who won't take the nourishment that the shepherd is providing. Or we're like that, that sheep that refuses to stay with the flock but wants to go off on its own or, or be part of another flock, so to speak. And so there is a very real need to be submissive in our attendance. They, they, they don't command, uh, they lead by example, but our elders are here to worship three times a week, and certainly we ought to try to make an effort to do that as well, uh, because again, three times a week, three hours a week, isn't really that much. When we think about the fact that um, Christ ought to be our number one priority, His church ought to be our number one priority, in terms of how much time we spend in Bible study, three hours a week isn't that much to ask. And they would be well within their rights to even increase that amount of time and, um, you know, encourage us to do even more. Again, we have a, I think we have a good congregation here. We have a lot of, of good active members, but we can always do better. We can always improve. Uh, we need to grow. We need to grow numerically and we need to grow spiritually. And, and that's something that I will always say. We need to grow numerically and spiritually. 
And as the elders guide us and we're working towards some of those goals, let's, let's be submissive, let's be respectful, remember them in our prayers, pray for their wisdom, pray for the good work that they're doing, and let's step up ourselves and follow their example in the good work that is being done. As we conclude our lesson this morning, we want to offer you an invitation. If you have never obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, if you've never become a Christian, we offer you an opportunity to do that today. Based upon your belief that Jesus is the Son of God, if, if you will repent or turn from your sins, confess your faith, and be baptized or immersed in water, your sins can be forgiven. And we could baptize you this very day that your sins might be washed away. If you've not done that, we, we're going to sing a song. And as we sing it, if you would come forward to one of the front pews, we could baptize you this day. If you've already done that, you're a Christian, but you're a Christian who's become unfaithful by allowing sin into your life, we encourage you to repent of that sin. And if you would like our prayers, we would be glad to pray for you. So we encourage you to come as we stand in it. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions or comments, Ralph can be reached at rprice at streetsboroughchurch.org or by calling 330-626-4282. If you would like to learn more about the Church of Christ, we offer free Bible correspondence courses by mail and home Bible studies. We hope that you enjoyed this lesson. Feel free to come visit us. We would love to have the opportunity to meet you.